Hey guys and welcome back to another video and today's video we're going to work on a portrait uh, painting on a black sweater. In the last video I showed you how to create stencils for different types of uh, applications and using different mediums. This time around I won't be able to use a stencil because my uh, printer, uh, toner, went out so I have to do this freehand and uh, it's a great way to show you how I do it. If you guys are new here, my name is Ernie and I customize just about anything from promotional products to custom one-off gifts like this one here. And let's go ahead and get started with this project. So on this sweater, there's going to be two different faces. It's the same person, but uh, in, I guess in different time uh, frames. Uh, I want to make sure that the faces kind of are the same and uh, somewhat uh, the same size. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. What I'm doing is I'm using a straight line down the center of the face to try to see uh, how big I'm gonna do it and I'm at the same time trying to visualize the brownness of the face. I always start from the center out. It makes it easier to uh, get all the spacing correctly. I'm not too worried about the actual shape of the face because eventually when you put in the eyes, the nose, you know, the mouth and the cheeks, that'll kind of define the shape of the overall um, outside of the shape of the face so i'm not too worried about that i just kind of want to get a rough idea of where it's going to land and compare it to the other face so starting from the center of the face right between the two eyes that's where i'm going to start and i'm going to try to find the correct spacing between the uh, the two eyes i then find the spacing for the eyebrows and try to lay out the shapey the shapey the uh, shape of the eyebrows so the majority of the faces, um, you can kind of utilize other reference points like where the eyes kind of end or the pupil kind of ends and that'll determine where the thickness of the nose is going to be or the uh, thickness of the mouth. And uh, you can find reference uh, photos online. I'll go ahead and put one here on the screen. But uh, what you're looking for is um, trying to find the, the correct spacing and uh, in between each part. So. From the, no from the nose to the eyes, from the nose to like the upper lip, the thickness of the entire lip and the, and the mouth, uh, and then from the bottom of the lip down to the chin. And that'll kind of give you an idea of, of how to shape uh, the face. And of course, the ears always kind of like start uh, towards the center of where the eyes are and kind of finish kind of where, where the mouth or, or the nose is, depending on how big the ears are. As I continue with the project, I'm going to try to redefine the shadows and the highlights uh, as I continue going along. So I'm not too worried about where the stuff is going to fall. I, I mean, as far as the shadows and highlights go when I'm using the pen. Right now, what I'm trying to do is not only find the highlights, the shadows, but I'm going to also try to lay down a really thick uh, uh, base of white. And this way, my other colors really stand out and, um, you know, they don't look all like washed out and stuff like that so i'm also trying to create this uh, medium gray film all over the entire uh, sweater this way i can uh, also you know add my dark shadows or my blacks when i come back and will really give me a nice um, canvas to start laying out all those uh, darker areas as you've been following this channel, um, you'll know that I'm trying to test out different whites and I finally found the one that I like and I'll be doing a video on that later on. But uh, I'm also trying to figure out how I can uh, make my um, paintings more durable and also try to figure out how to uh, kind of flatten down the little fibers that are on the sweater or shirt because um, they tend to be a little bit annoying and, um, and you know they're just kind of there. Uh, so I figured out another way of uh, making those a little flat. Right now what I'm doing is spraying a little bit of Autoborn sealer which acts like a little bit of glue and I'm using a very hot iron and uh, kind of like a, like a Teflon type of sheet that I can put on top of the, uh, the sweater and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to dry uh, you know anything that's kind of wet and at the same time I'm trying to seal all that white paint onto the uh, fabric itself this way it's not only durable but uh, but it's dry as well and it gives me a good um, kind of like a good base to be able to uh, put down the uh, uh, additional colors that I'm gonna put down so the process is going to be the same as what I do on the white shirts I'm gonna work my way from the lighter color onto the darker color. So I'm gonna lay down the, a little bit of uh, skin color and then 
lighter brown, darker brown, and follow it up with um, with uh, black, and then coming back at the end and uh, doing a little bit of highlights with white. When working on dark items, you want to make sure you're drawing in between each color because you are laying down a lot of color due to the fact that it's a dark garment. So you're going to be laying more than usual uh, compared to the white shirt. So make sure you dry in between. This way your colors don't look all muddy. All right, and all my base color is already down. Now let's go ahead and add some uh, highlights and shadows. And of course, we're gonna seal this at the end as well. This way, all the additional colors that we added are also sealed uh, onto the garment with a little bit of heat, and it'll last a little bit longer. You guys help me out. I'm trying to create more videos and the more a subscription I get the more I'll be able to do uh, videos and then this way I can get uh, someone to help me edit as well and I can present more videos to you so do me a favor and subscribe We have one more face to do on the back of the sweater. Luckily my toner came in and I was able to do a stencil. Uh, I went ahead and placed the face a little bit lower than usual only because we have that hoodie that kind of falls towards the back and I don't want that covering the uh, portrait. It's crucial when you're working with a picture reference that uh, it's the clearest that you can possibly get of the person or uh, yourself but in some cases you know that's the only picture they got so you got to kind of work with that and uh, unfortunately we won't be able to get as much detail as we can but we're going to definitely try uh, to do so uh, knowing that the front of um, the front portraits on this particular project is the same person just in different you know time frames of their life uh, and i want to go ahead and try to remember like you know where certain shadows or shapes of their face are this way I can apply it to this one here all right the back is done and everything seems to be dry so I'm gonna apply the iron um, to it this way we can kind of melt the um, the acrylic onto the fabric and it really helps make it more durable uh, be sure to use a, um, a Teflon a cover like I am and that normally you get that for like um, when you press transfers onto shirts uh, that's where that comes from uh, because if you do like kind of put the heat like right against the shirt it's just gonna ruin everything it's gonna be too hot and things are gonna stick onto the iron the, the acrylic is gonna stick to the iron and you're just gonna have a mess uh, it's gonna ruin the entire project and you're gonna have to start all over again so just make sure you use that uh, uh, that cover there well guys, that's going to be it for this video, so hopefully I'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy for now. Bye-bye.